Good morning, thank you. I'm Justin Smith, Larimer County Sheriff, J-U-S-T-I-N-S-M-I-T-H. Um, a little bit about what's happened since we spoke last. Um, through the night, we had deputies in the field, we had officers in the field. Um, most of that was, in the beginning, attempting to hold those points uh, we had on the highways. Uh, you know what went up as far as the river flows overnight. The best essence I can tell you was we had estimates of pretty high river flows. By late night, early morning, those had been revised up about 50% for both the Poudre Canyon and the Big Thompson Canyon. So we dealt with that. It, it, on the north end with the Poudre Canyon, what that meant was actually going in with Larimer County Sheriff's personnel, Poudre Fire Authority personnel, removing people from the Laporte area, uh, the McConnell Drive subdivision you're familiar with, pulling, helping those folks out. We got that done. At the same time, the city of Fort Collins was doing evacuations on their, essentially, their 100-year floodplain. So those things happened. Uh, Timberline Church and the Red Cross um, has a shelter for a lot of the people in the north end. Those are the things that happened. At the same time, uh, the city also was looking at concerns with bridges, and so for the most part, cut off traffic over the over uh, Poudre River as it comes through Fort Collins. And as you're now familiar, that extends to out to I-25. And my last understanding is essentially I-25 from Wyoming down to I-76 is closed because of all the problems between. They just didn't want people jammed up in here. So. That, I mean, that's almost unprecedented to see. Uh, we have those things going on. So as we look from the Pooter, we have that, and then we go down to Big Thompson. Um, here's the challenges overnight. Water flows came up at, at levels not anticipated to the point that in the middle of the night, you can't see much. The officers had to move those roadblocks back in some areas fairly significantly. I, I'll let you look at what came out on the emergency page and give you the specifics. But they pulled back and pulled back. Um, area where we met yesterday at Sandy's. At Sandy's, um, <coughs> my latest understanding was that was estimated at one point to be two feet underwater. I don't have any estimate now what that is. Um, I can tell you that watching the radar now, um, we're seeing that building um, flow coming up. And as I looked at the map, that was basically. Pueblo on the south end, Denver on the north end, that chunk is moving up to us. Not maybe as intense as we've seen at times, but big. So we see that water still continuing to come up. We move back those roadblocks to safe areas. Um, I, I would basically say we were in defense. Uh, to equate this to how we deal with fires, when you had the, the uh, uh, very dangerous fire behavior that we had in the fire a year ago when it started, that's kind of what we had in the flood. It's just a matter get people out of the way, give them those opportunities, pull them back, and hold those points. That's where we're at. Now, we do have some, some very helpful resources with the National Guard. We're starting to be able to get the National Guard MPs out to take over at some of these checkpoints. We have to readjust what those checkpoints are. We have them. We also have the search and rescue component. But the reality is we just can't put them out to these areas yet. We do know that there are people stranded throughout Larimer County, uh, up and down, whether it's the rivers, by creeks, wherever. We've got folks stranded. We simply can't get in there. It's been the safest thing right now to have them shelter in place, try to identify where they're at, keep note of it. And as this thing subsides, as we get to a point, the waters quit rising and start to pull back we'll make some decisions on what we can do to get in there. A huge piece of that is going to be the air assets. It's going to be getting those National Guard helicopters in the air. Um, we're in the process now of making some of that happen. I can't give you exact time frames or where or when, but we, we actually see the potential for that to come in. How far they can get up, how far, we just don't know yet. Uh, we also have a reconnaissance airship uh, that's on contract to the United States Forest Service. Uh, a resource they use for firefighting that we've made available to us and we'll put somebody up to be able to do uh, reconnaissance to take a look at what's up there so those are the basic points we have now some of the concerns we have uh, essentially we take Larimer County and for all practical purposes we're divided everything north of the Poudre River is one section the middle section between the Poudre 
and Big Thompson is a section. And then the third major section is everything south of the Big Thompson. Now in saying that, I know we also have problems on the Little Thompson down near Berthoud uh, between County Road 2 and 4 on both sides of 287. Uh, we had reports last night the bridges were lost on each side of there. 287 was still good last time I heard. These things are always subject to change. So we have these splits. Um, while we've never seen this before, I can tell you we've certainly been aware this could happen. We've planned, we've exercised for something like this. So uh, we've got the players here. Uh, the Emergency Operations Center at the Sheriff's Office is, is back on its beat. It's, it's pumping along. We have local resources, county resources, state. And with the Presidential Declaration of Disaster for this area, we have a Type 2 incident overhead team ordered on their way here. I don't have any specifics on that. We're planning where to put them, etc. When that team gets here, one advantage to the citizens is it will help bring us all together under a team that can manage everything that's going on. The first thing coming up is, is response and rescue, getting to people that are trapped, getting to these flooded houses. After that, we're, as soon as these waters come down, it's going to be recovery. Recovery is going to be a long process. We all know that. This team will help us get started, and what it'll do, it'll coordinate between Larimer County, Fort Collins, Loveland, Estes Park, and any other community here that has an incident command uh, or emergency operations center set up. So it'll bring those things together. Timelines and how long this will all last, I'm just simply not going to speculate at this point. The big challenge we have still is Estes Park is completely cut off um, from U.S. highways with the exception of the ability to come in over Trail Ridge. Last I knew, that was still open as a possibility to get resources in. So things that we need to get there have to go all the way around and come in from Granby. A significant trip to get in. What we don't have now, we still are completely without phone service there. And, and please carry to your listeners, your viewers, that if they can't get a hold of somebody up there, they're not answering the phone. Understand the phones just aren't working. Whether that's cell phones or landline phones, they're not working. We're working with CenturyLink because they need to get into Estes Park with certain resources to get to the area they believe the problems are at. Um, first is we need to get them in there, which is most likely at this point coming over Trail Ridge Road. Um, the second part of that is getting to the areas that are problems. And Estes Park, I've seen some of the video that you folks have gotten a hold of and shown. It's on the internet. You, you, it's tremendous problems up there as well. So those things are simply unknown, but we're working to get the resources in. Um, if today's shifts, we'll be able to actually stabilize at some point and then look to future where we're going. With that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask Carol Lamb to come in. What she's going to be able to talk about from Bureau of Reclamation is the dams and the water flow, questions you have on those. After she gets done, then Nick will lead us in a question and answer session. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Kara Lamb, K-A-R-A, -A, and Lamb, L-A-M-B, like a sheep. I'm the public information officer for the Bureau of Reclamation here in eastern Colorado. For those who don't know, Reclamation is a federal agency. We own and operate the Colorado Big Thompson Project, which is a water project designed to bring water over from the west slope of Colorado to meet supplemental water needs here on the east slope of Colorado. We're not designed for flood control. So what we've been doing is managing our project and monitoring the inflows to our dams and reservoirs closely so we can maximize the system we do have to move some water out of in particular the Big Thompson Canyon. We're not able to do a lot of movement right now because of all the rain inflow we're seeing to our canals and into our tunnels. Our main focus of course has been Lake Estes and the dam that holds Lake Estes back, that's Olympus Dam. So the first thing I want to clarify for everybody is that all of our dams on the Colorado Big Thompson project have been operating very well. They are safe. They are doing exactly what they are designed to do. At Lake Estes, last night in particular, we had a lot of activity. The rain came in around 7 p.m. and went till about 12, very heavy, and we saw our inflows jump up well above 4,600 cubic feet per second. So we've talked about it before, 
that a, a cubic foot might be the volume of a basketball and that basketball would weigh somewhere around 60 pounds and for engineers out there I know that's not quite specific enough but we're trying to get a general visual so imagine coming in to Lake Estes in the middle of Estes Park about 44,000 600 cubic feet per second. We were able to pull a little bit of that water out. That's all rainwater. That's rain inflow. We were able to pull some of that out and send it to reservoirs like Pinewood, Carter, and Horsetooth. But the majority of it we've had to pass through Olympus Dam on down the Big Thompson Canyon. So last night we saw our releases to the Big Thompson Canyon peak at about 5,280 cubic feet per second we've been able to scale back since then because here's a little piece of good news. We've seen the rain slow down and that's given us some breathing room. In fact, we started today at a lower water elevation in Lake Estes than we started yesterday. And that's going to help us if we see rain come back this afternoon like it has before. Currently, the inflow to Lake Estes has slowed down to about 3,700 cubic feet per second and we are releasing to the Big Thompson Canyon about 4,180 cubic feet per second. So that's the update for the Colorado Big Thompson project right now. Thank you.